Potter's Journal Fall 2019. The year is drawing to a close. Um, this is my third year back to making pots. I was away from it for 25 years. Almost as important as making the pots is selling them. What do you do with them afterwards? When I made the first ones, I just looked at them and said, well, what am I going to do with these things now? Um, I just finished a big show. I think uh, we took a look at that in last week's video. Today I'll let you know what really happened. Um, I've also uh, done consignment shop, uh, a couple little shows. We'll um, talk about that, but it seems like no matter what, as an artist, as a potter, there is always the carrot held out there. And somehow, never, always, no matter how hard you try, you just can't reach it. Okay, let's see what happened in the studio this week and talk about uh, the big shows this year. I do sell pots here directly from the studio. Actually, very seldom. There's maybe one or two people that know that I'm here to stop by. Um, however, I have two, two, two sales, a holiday sale, Christmas. Because I have a Christmas tree farm, I have people stopping here even if I didn't promote a pottery sale. And also at the nursery in the spring, um, there are people stopping for plants, so I do a sale with the pottery then. This was a special order. Um, these are the garlic grater plates where you grate the garlic and um, the oil for dipping. Um, this is a special order that came from the farmer's market. I often complain about um, selling at the farm market. I've got to go in every week and unload two or three crates and pack it all up again. I might make maybe, oh, what? Uh, Twenty dollars, or I might make seventy-five. Um, um, but I'm already there with the plants, so it really doesn't take any extra time, uh, other than the fifteen minutes to pack up and close um, every day. And although I may complain about the farmers' market, um, all the packing and unpacking for just four hours, um, and only making between zero <laughs> and occasionally a hundred dollars um, it is where the special order came from they said do you make garlic grater plates and um, before and they were going to bring me a sample of one they had but by the time they showed up three or four weeks later I actually had the prototypes and mine were even nicer than the ones that they brought um, so it was a great place because I am there every week to take special orders. You know what, I don't think that's going to fit. Maybe if we take this out from underneath and I will, let's see, give that a check and see if it'll fit this way. And it's also where the little Fern Hollow Nur um, Environmental Center found me last spring and said, can you come and do our show? At the time, I didn't think much of their little show, um, but um, it was a very easy in and out and a very easy setup. And I did make um, you know, uh, enough there for the, the little bit of time in the afternoon. Um, I can't fire my bisques to 04. And we'll see now if we can fit another stack like in that in here. So people see me. I also did a dinnerware set um, from uh, a special order from a dinnerware set. So that's a nice um, aspect of it. The fact that you're there every week um, and uh, you can take special orders. Another another way I've sold the pots, a consignment shop, um, a, a little local one, actually not too far from me, and she still had pots in the shop from when I was making them 25 years ago. So she was, and you know what, I, um, this one is not fitting, so this is going to be a little... Uh, not quite as efficient firing as I'd hope. We're just firing up the last pieces of the year and trying to get the special order done. And, um... Oh, 
Okay, so let's take a look at that. Here I am at Betty Jones's gift shop. She's also my accountant, so she's got people coming in here on a regular basis. A great way to do a consignment shop. Nice combination. Let's see what's going on here today. Hello, how you Hello. doing? Good, you? Do you? You have my taxes done yet? Working on them right now. Okay, how do you like the new pots? I love them. Okay, good. Let's see how what's what's out here. And you need to take advantage of all the ways you can to sell your work. That um, the consignment shops usually take about twenty to maybe thirty percent, so it's a good way to do it. Um, as opposed to a gallery that may take uh, forty to fifty, fifty-five percent. Um, not that I would rule that out either. I would love to sell my stuff through a gallery. Um, I, uh, especially for potters, a holiday sale, um, galleries holiday sale. I used to take part in one in Pittsburgh, the, at the Center for the Arts, when I was member of uh, several Pittsburgh guilds that had access to shows there. Um, I did apply to one this year, um, an art center right across from the farmers market. Um, I sadly did not get in, so um, I will try next year. I use the images that I took for the um, Penn's Colony Festival where they were more interested in uh, knowing what you made as opposed to seeing great pictures of it. So I'll have to work on my images for that next year. Looking to next year and trying to get that carrot. Here's a show I used to do that was real good, the Maple Syrup Festival. But I see it may be falling apart. They can't find a way to organize it with a new new group in charge. So we'll see. Always reaching for that carrot. I'll try again next year. Another reach was a um, little show at uh, actually a very nice historic village. Um, not the little one where I volunteer that used to be a very good show for me years ago um, It was a major disappointment. I was next to um, It wasn't juried and I was next to um, a craftsperson if you could say that to put digital computer images on the side of plastic thermoses they were being sold for twenty, fifteen, twenty dollars, and they had little pictures of pumpkins and hearts on them. And apparently, they were so cute, I couldn't quite figure it out that people couldn't decide which one to get. Um, however, fortunately, I did demonstrate there, and um, since I didn't do well, I did get half off on my booth fee. So it really didn't cost a lot on the booth fee and did some little red bar plates. If only I had an O5 glaze. I'm firing up to cone 6, so I don't know what I'm going to do to fire these. At the Big Pens Colony show, it was required to demonstrate, and I actually got people to make pinch pots. Um, however, at the little show where I um, didn't do well, at least it got me half the price of a booth fee, and I did these redware plates. First doing very traditional um, patterns and designs, but then saying, okay, now how would I do this, and what's going on my pots now? Okay, if only I had a glaze for um, earthenware, redware, to around cone 05. Maybe next time, too, I might think of putting my boy Ralph on the side of these. Another way to sell your pots would be online, um, an Etsy site, a website. Okay, I don't have either of those. Um, but I have been putting the best of my pieces aside for such a thing. I figure if you're going to have to make a special trip to the post office or deliver one package, um, it probably should be better work, something you maybe charge a little more for. So, 
I went into this show, the big show, prepared to hate it because of the fee, because of the clothes. Um, in the end, I just couldn't. Um, it was two weekends long, so if you divide the fee in half, it was like doing two shows. And um, I was in a bit of a minority with my almost costume when so many people were really authentic and into that. But um, it was fun to watch them, find out what they're doing and why. Um, and um, I didn't sell a lot of anything, but I did sell a little bit of everything. Um, um, shots. they have been around the studio for three years. I thought because a souvenir shot was five dollars I should be able to get that. Well, I finally put them down to three and my price range went from there on up. I also had my faux wood garden where I was also able to sell plants and herbs which helped. But um, on the other end of the price scale from the shots, uh, my wavy bowls have been around the studio for a year or two. Um, I sold those. And the chip and dip, um, the big ones, but they also liked I made a smaller one. That I guess nobody else makes a smaller one. I also had them price about 20% below probably where they should be. So that helped to sell them. I may not have sold them otherwise, and I don't mind making them. They're relatively easy to make, um, and I've had uh, good luck with that. Um, mugs, I didn't sell a lot of mugs. Um, However, they did go for my skull mugs, which made me real happy because they were um, the ones I liked that I put a little bit more into the design and the art side of it as opposed to them just being blue. And you know, that is what I sold. I sold everything with the Celadon glaze on. Um, so apparently I just need to dump, dip everything in that bucket and nothing else. It makes it a little bit boring for me. Um, the, uh, mug I did sell was the um, 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 the face mugs. Uh, I took the face jugs, I think they were marked 123, 125, and I didn't sell any big ones, but um, they sold the little ones, and that was um, um, one of my hope for success, um, um, to be able to get more for a mug than, uh, you know, an average potter might get, uh, that if I had a name I might get, so that worked there. I did sell everything blue. The face jugs I sold blue. And this is the one that two sweet old ladies both gave me $100 bills and got change back that I was worried about. I didn't know what to look for. The watermark. And now looking here, okay, I don't know. Ronald McDonald, is he supposed to be in the watermark? I hope so. Um, but back to selling everything blue. I sold pig banks that were blue anything and everything blue. I made so many soap plates and I make these also without the holes so they can function as you can put your rings in there, they function as spoon dishes, they function as soap plates, they function as garlic um, or oil dipping plates. So that was a little disappointment. None of those. They also fit in every spot in the kiln to make kiln firing work for me. You know I sold you know, a batter bowl, I sold a berry colander, a little bit of everything. And, let's see, oh, here they are. The oil plates without the uh, the holes in them. And, um, yeah, they went for the uh, oil pours, too. And um, they also, this was a good contact piece. Um, this, um, a, a potter, or I mean, another vendor, uh, the oil tap, who I knew from the farmer's market. And I told them, I do this stuff. You need this to sell. The olive tap. And this is the way to do it. Look at this. Lined up here beautifully. And see, if I was a merchandiser, I could do that. Little gift plates. Well, here's what I need to do. He's got these things commercially. I need to sell my friend here some pottery that's handmade. We saw LB Ceramics do these on uh, his channel, so I'm going to do it in his were a little more efficient for throwing for a potter. The little Ron things, okay, what are these? Ceramic dipping bowls. Okay, I guess that these are for the olive oil too. Wow, yeah, that's incredible. incredible. Yeah, great. And um, here's the ones I make that are round. I introduced him to the garlic grater plates, so that was a big thing to do. Huh? Introduce a 
hopefully a potential customer to something new. But here's what I can't do. This little marketing and packaging stuff. The little rattan, the little logo, a recipe in there. And that's where as a potter we sometimes have problems and it doesn't work out. After the summer shows, I am not dancing in the streets, but um, I did make deposits in the bank. I did pay some bills. I um, do feel like I got a hold of those carrots. Um, do comment, subscribe if you're watching, and stop back to see if we can add some meat to that pot of soup.